All right, in today's warm up, uh, you are asked to write the electron configuration for the element yttrium, which is element number 39 on the periodic table. It's a transition metal right here. Uh, and so this is really just a review of unit seven. Um, so what do we know about yttrium? We know the symbols Y. We know the atomic number is 39. And if you recall, the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom of yttrium. And then the atomic mass, it's hard to read, it's pretty pixelated here, is 88.9. Um, and the atomic mass is a weighted average mass of all atoms or isotopes of an element. Um, and so what we do with the atomic mass is we would round it to the closest whole number to determine the number of neutrons um, for an average atom of yttrium. So here, what we can infer from those numbers is that the nucleus of a yttrium atom has 39 protons. And then to find the number of neutrons, we would subtract the closest whole number 89 um, minus 39 to determine the number of neutrons because the number of protons is 39. The atomic mass or the mass number would be protons plus neutrons. So when you subtract the two, you get 50 neutrons. So that's your nucleus, right? Now, to determine the number of electrons, we can, um, in this case, assume that this is a neutral atom, which means the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. We can also use the periodic table to determine how many energy levels a yttrium atom has based on which row it resides in. So yttrium is in the fifth row of the periodic table, which tells us it has five energy levels where we can find electrons. Now, how many electrons are in each energy level? Well, that can be determined based on electron configuration. Um, so to write the full electron configuration, what we need to recall is the pattern or how the periodic table is organized based on um, orbital shapes. So if you remember from first semester, unit seven, we've got our S block elements, which include helium. We've got our P block elements through the noble gases. We got our D block elements, which is the transition metals. So S, P, D. And then we have our F block elements, which are the um, lanthanides and actinides. So we can use this information to write the electron configuration. Now there are a couple of kinks in the pattern. Um, if you remember back to unit seven, for example, the first row, which is four um, of the D block is actually the 3D orbital block. And then the fifth row is 4D, the sixth row is 5D, the seventh row is 6D. And then the F block would be 4F and 5F. Um, if you don't remember that and you go back to your Unit 7 learning targets and worksheets, that pattern is everywhere. So what we do then is we can write the electron configuration based on the pattern. So for example, um, if we were to write the electron configuration for hydrogen, it would be 1s1. The electron configuration for helium would be 1s2. Now an s orbital can only hold two electrons. So we fill the s orbital in the first energy level, and then we could write the electron configuration for lithium as 2s1. Beryllium would be, sorry, 2s2. Now we've filled the 2s orbital. 
we move to boron. Boron would be 2p1, carbon would be 2p2, nitrogen 2p3, neon would be 2p6. So now we've filled the P block in the second energy level. So thinking back to the pattern, the coefficients represent the energy level. The S, P, D, and F represent the shape of orbitals. And then the superscripts, two or six in this case, represent the number of electrons that occupy those different regions of space. So this would be the electron configuration for neon. We're not done though, because we need to go all the way to yttrium. So after 2p6, it's 3s2. After 3s2, it would be 3p6. That would take us to argon. How do I know? If I add up all of those superscripts, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6, I get the atomic number of 18. Once we've filled the three P's, then the next one is going to be 4s1 for potassium, 4s2 for calcium. Then I'm going to go to the 3Ds. So the 3Ds, um, 3D1 would be scandium, 3D2 would be titanium, 3D10 would be zinc. So now we have completed our electron configuration for zinc. If we keep on moving, then 4P6 would take us all the way to krypton. 5S2 would take us to strontium. And 4D1 would finish us out at yttrium. So this is the full electron configuration for yttrium. We can now take that electron configuration and we can use it to draw a modified Bohr model. Um, so we know that in the first energy level, which is the energy level closest to the nucleus, there are two electrons. How do I know that? There it is. In the second energy level, we have two plus six electrons for a total of eight. In the third energy level, we have 2 plus 6 plus 10 electrons for a total of 18. In the fourth energy level, we have 2 plus 6 plus 1, a total of 9. And in the fifth energy level, we have 2. So there are two valence electrons. Valence electrons are electrons furthest from the nucleus. The fifth energy level is the valence energy level. And there are a total of 30 electrons, sorry, not 30 electrons, 39 electrons if we account for all of the electrons um, from the first to the fifth energy level. So tally them all up. The number of electrons should be the same as the number of protons in the nucleus, since this is a neutral atom. And that's all we got. Um, for homework tonight, you are supposed to do the pre-lab for the periodic trends of metals activity that we'll complete tomorrow. Um, the pre-lab is everything through the data table. If you're absent, um, the plan is for me to provide the data for you and you can complete the lab analysis with that data. I'll try to take a video of that as well so you can see kind of what's happening in the lab. That's all for now. See you later.